Uh, I just feel like I've been getting so many misinformed comments about EVs recently. Sometimes they're genuine, like EVs aren't really great, but sometimes they come down to things that genuinely make me lose faith in humanity. So when Mini reached out to sponsor this video busting EV myths, I quickly jumped on the opportunity. I mean, I was already going to make the video anyway. And you guys know, even though this is sponsored, I'm not gonna say anything I don't actually believe. So today we're going to go through the top five EV myths that I receive on a literal daily basis across my EV reviews with, of course, the pocketable mini electric as my example vehicle. A lot of people worry about one, where will I charge it and how long does it take? Let's bust that. Talk to anyone about an electric car and they'll probably start telling you about how their mum's uncle once got stranded trying to drive from Sydney to Melbourne. While yes, charging infrastructure is certainly not the best still, it is certainly better than it was even two years ago, way better. Today, charging infrastructure has seen an increase everywhere. There are stations popping up at shopping centers. Hell, I've come to a random office block near my home <laughs> and they've got chargers. And of course, there's always the option to just charge at home. Hell, I even went to one of my local tiny shopping centers and they had free EV charging, which you bet I used. And charging is only getting better. Of course, using this mini EV as an example, two and a half hours will get you zero to 80% on AC charging. That's slower charging. Right now I'm using DC charging. And in the time that I've been speaking to you, this thing has gone almost fully charged. Even though it's slowed down for battery management purposes, oh, it's still at 94%. That's very good. In fact, mini claim that this will get from zero to 80% on DC charging like this in just 36 minutes, which is very good. And I mean, while you're waiting, check out this interior. It's a pretty nice place to just sit. I bet for most people, if you look up where your nearest fast charging station is, it probably isn't as far as you would think. Boom, myth busted. Let's get onto one of my favorite myths. Now, one of the most common myths we hear about electric vehicles is all about range. People worry they won't have enough range to daily commute or that they'll be stranded far away from the nearest charging station. This is what we call range anxiety. Interestingly, a recent survey conducted by Mini with 1,000 participants revealed a fascinating disconnect. Uh, most people feel that 60 kilometers of driving or less is enough for their daily routines, and yet the fear of range anxiety still persists. The Mini Electric is a great example of why range anxiety is more of an irrational mental state than anything based in fact. Although its range is only 233 kilometers or so, in my two weeks of living with the Mini Electric, that has been no issue. In fact, in in some ways, it's a better situation than a lot of similarly sized internal combustion engine cars because with them, you drive until you run out of range. And of course, you start the car in the morning, it might have half a quarter of a tank left. And that's like 100 kilometers of range. Whereas with a car like the Mini Electric, it's always topped up, especially if you're just charging from home. So you get into a car, it has 100% of a tank. And I mean, props to the Mini Electric here. When you buy a car like this, you understand what you're buying. It's purposely designed with a tiny 32.6 kilowatt hour battery, but that's actually a good thing because that means not only can it charge really quick because it's small, it keeps the weight down. That extends the range. It becomes a mitigating cost when you start adding huge batteries to a car. On the one hand, yes, they get more range, but on the other hand, they get heavier. Not to mention, if you actually care about the environment, a smaller battery is better because there's a reduced footprint. So boom, myth busted. Okay, so moving on to EV myth number three. And this one's a little bit silly, but apparently some people actually believe this. If that's you, what are you taking? <laughs> What you need to understand is EVs essentially have it on easy mode. This mini electric is a great example of that. It actually handles substantially better than a standard Mini Cooper, which already handles really well because its center of gravity is quite a lot lower than a standard Mini with a combustion engine. This thing has a really low center of gravity. Thankfully though, it's not just subjective, it's objective. So rather than trying to subjectively argue my point, why don't we use satellites to prove that point for us? This is my race box and it will tell us exactly how fast we're going 
by connecting to a bunch of satellites. And all of those satellites will pinpoint our time. Now the Mini EV is actually one of the cheaper EVs on the market at the moment. And so theoretically, this should be a worst case for an EV performance. But as you'll see, it's pretty phenomenal. So Mini claim that this will do zero to 100 in 7.2 seconds, which is very respectable. We'll put the car into sport mode. We will put traction into sport as well. And let's see if we can prove our point. Here we go. That instant torque is insane. It like keeps pulling harder and harder and harder. <laughs> Zero to 100 in 6.95 seconds. That's quick. And that is for what is a relatively affordable EV. One of the coolest things about EVs is the instant torque. And actually, if you have a look at the V-Box, you'll see that the 0 to 60 kilometer an hour time is actually pretty fast. And that's because EVs excel really within the speed limit, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, especially versus a combustion engine because of the instant torque. Not to mention the way that this thing handles is on another level. And this is the same for pretty much all EVs. There are no gears to shift through. There's no lag. You just put your foot down and it's like one to one. Car just goes. And as I said, the center of gravity is really low. So around town, you can just throw it around and it is completely fine to do so. In fact, the car is perfect for it. And you know, props to mini designers here because <laughs> They've made a car that's a lot of fun. And it really does have the mini trademark go-kart handling. Check this out. It's just <laughs> so good. But also, it's one of the most pocketable EVs out there. So, it's so easy to live with, especially in urban environments. It's really where this car is made for. I mean, it's so easy just to park. It's one of the easiest cars. So yeah, the myth that EVs are slow or boring. You've obviously never driven one. Boom, myth busted. Let's get into number four. Oh, okay. Myth number four, EVs aren't really green. Let's delve into this one and see if it holds water. Now, when we talk about green, we're looking at the entire life cycle of the vehicle. This includes everything from production to usage to the end of life stage. Now, looking at the production side, it is true that manufacturing an electric vehicle, especially the battery, does have an environmental impact. And it's also true that manufacturing EV initially produces more CO2 than an internal combustion engine counter. Part. However, if you take a look at this very professional graph I drew earlier, the total CO2 outputs over the life of an EV has a break even point and then CO2 savings when you compare it to the same car with an engine even when using Australia's 71% fossil fuel powered energy. The Mini EV obviously has a more minimalist EV setup with a smaller batteries, therefore less raw material. So that its graph would probably look something more like this. Then there is the chemistry of the battery, which includes materials like cobalt, which are infamously mined from slave driven mines in Congo. And this is really where I would implore you to research whatever car you are buying to avoid any manufacturing which may source their cobalt from less than ethical sources. For example, BMW Group, who owns Mini, purchases cobalt from mines in Australia and Morocco, and that helps to ensure responsible sourcing of the mineral when they're producing lithium ion batteries. And that background research you should do extends to recycling, which is another huge environmental issue if not done correctly. A battery pack holds precious rare earth metals and also a bunch of toxic nasties. At the end of a BMW electric vehicle's lifespan, and therefore a mini vehicle's lifespan, the batteries are re purposed as an energy storage device at a renewable energy plant. So when it is finally retired from that plant, that battery is then stripped of its raw materials, which are then recovered and reused. So when we take a comprehensive look at the life cycle, it's clear that electric vehicles like the mini electric hatch are a step forward in sustainability, especially when you compare it to their petrol counterparts. Myth number five, high maintenance costs and battery replacements. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions is that maintaining an electric vehicle like the mini electric electric hatch is more expensive than a conventional car. But it's important to remember that EVs have far fewer moving parts. There's no engine oil to change, no transmission to fail, at least on, for example, the mini EV, and regenerative braking can help reduce wear on brake pads. 
All of that means cheaper servicing. So let's use the Mini Electric hatch as a real world example. Regular maintenance for the Mini mainly consists of inspections, tire rotations, and occasional parts replacements like brake fluid. These costs are often comparable, if not substantially less than maintaining a petrol or diesel car. So for six years of servicing, the Mini Electric will cost you, get this, $1,280. <laughs> That's nothing. In comparison, a combustion engine Mini Cooper will cost you almost double. So what about battery replacements, you ask? Well, batteries today are a lot more than just electrical cells. They have loads of systems, essentially computers, keeping them in check. And the biggest killer of batteries is heat. But a lot of cars, Mini Electric included, have really smart battery management systems to optimize charging, temperature, performance, and more importantly, the longevity of batteries. Battery degradation used to be a huge concern for Priuses when they, when they first came out, but like anything, those fears went away uh, after a few years. But I'm curious to hear from you guys. Have you heard of these myths? Is there anything that I've left out? These are just some of the recurring themes I get from commenters on my videos. So I'm curious to see, do you guys agree? Thank you guys very much for watching. Ciao for now.